Uh, I got the block all cleaned up, got the cam bearings out, hit everything, cleaned everything, wiped it down about four or five times. Everything's super clean. Uh, there's some residual staining and oil marks in here, but it's uh, it's about as clean as that's going to get. Um, hit everything with a ton of brake clean, wiped everything down. I'm not getting any more marks out of the cylinders. Um, cam bearings are all out, so we're going to be putting those in first. Um, and I'm going through our parts here. We've got uh, some trick flow valve springs, uh, <clears throat> rod bearings, main bearings, and the most important ones for right now are the cam bearings. So, uh, the valve lifter set. Um, so we'll just be going through, and I'm not going to touch anything on the top end today, but I am trying to get this bottom end set up. So, stick around, follow along if you want. Try my best to get this in as smoothly as possible. All right, so just like I said before, um, we're using the cam install tool now. Um, you got your tapered splined area. So when you tighten this, it basically expands it, kicks those grooves out, and the bearing will ride on this. So for this one, I'm gonna hit this real quick with some brake clean, clean off the oil residue. Uh, I've seen some people actually put lube on the bearing that goes in, uh, assembly lube or oil or something to try and get the bearing to sit better. Um, that bearing should be pressed into the case um, on the block. I would not recommend oiling that. Um, I mean, I'm sure some people have done it and I'm sure it's worked fine, but to me, uh, I don't want anything to give it more of a chance for a bearing to spin around in the block that it's supposed to stay in. Uh, when we get into the Ford bearings, these are actually labeled. Um, it's gonna be kind of hard. So we got numbers here. Five, 10, 511, 512, 513, 514. So we got 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, uh, if you're just looking at these, this is SH510. Notice there's two oil fittings here, or two oil grooves. We got one here, one here. On the actual block, Let's see if I can turn you guys around to see that. Um, on this front passage, on the, where the cam's gonna ride, we have two oil holes. We have one here and one there. So on this one, there's two oil passages. There, there. This one bearing with two oil slots in it goes with the one with two holes in it. The rest of them are basically just gonna be a single hole underneath the oil passage. And I'll show you guys that in a second. So in the block here, you have your oil feed. Um, that will run oil down into the cam and keep the cam lubricated. That's right in here on these passages. Um, you have one throughway. It's the smaller of the two holes here. These bleed right down into the cam bearing. There's a hole in the bottom, uh, uh, bottom as the block is sitting upside down. Um, but when you flip it over, this is in the bottom. So on your cam bearings, you have one hole on all of them except for that first one. And the last one is a little bit fatter than the rest of them. So when you do this, you're going to start in the back. And basically, I'm going to start at number five or the fifth cam lobe hole, uh, cam bearing hole. So we're starting all the way at the back of the block. Um, this is the one that's going to go in first. Make sure to take, um, if you need to, draw it on the block with Sharpie so you know exactly where that oil passage is. Um, and another way to test it when you are done, take a flashlight or 
guinea pig or something, put it down this oil passage and make sure that the bearing is actually directly lined up with the passage. The hole in the bearing lines up with the hole in the passage. Got this, threading this on. This was out in the driveway for about 10 minutes, about 99, 98 degrees right now. It should be in the garage, but it's humid and muggy in there too, so. Alright, bearing sitting in the rubber part that's cleaned now. And then, as I tighten it, it locks the bearing in place. Okay. Tighten this down. You want the bearing sitting flush on the end as you expand it. So now, on this ring, we have the bearing seated on the rubber section. The inside's protected by the rubber. It's the outside shoulder that's lined up, and that's what's going to put pressure on everything. Um, so that's exactly how we're going to put that in. We are back. Uh, the phone died because we were out in the driveway for about six minutes, and it's way too hot for the phone to function and overheat it. So let that cool off a little bit. Um, we got the cam bearing tool set up here. Um, it's holding this bearing in place. So this is free floating right now. You can basically turn this rod and the, adjust the aim or the hole in the bearing because it's locked in place. Um, this slot in the bearing needs to match up with this oil passage. If you put it in upside down, you will have all sorts of issues because if I go like this, it blocks the oil feed. You need the oil to be able to get through this bearing to lubricate the cam. So once we have this lined up, I like to center it on the hole. Um, this is centered here. Uh, might be a good idea to sharpie this if you need to, so you have a reference line for the middle of that, um, just to give you a better, better visual of where that's gonna land. Um, we, we're gonna check it after too, just to verify, but uh, don't go pounding on it yet because this is still floating and that's where this tapered section, the cone on the other end comes into play. We're gonna set this right into the block. Now it's fixed. So we have a bearing, we have our um, cone leveling it, keeping it square and centered or lined up. So you just go down to the end and pound it in. Loosen it a little bit and that slides this free. Now, before I go any further, I'm gonna grab a flashlight and double check to make sure. The end one's a little goofier. Because I don't have the cap in on the back side of the block to stop it anymore. But if I look right down in this passage, in the oil passage, Make sure that the passage lines up with the can bearing. So here, if I shine this here, you can see light on the bottom of the bearing. Cover this up. That light coming through means that oil is going to get into your can or onto your can. That's what you want to see. Okay. I think that's about it for that one. Trying to verify where that's sitting, center of the hole. Yep. So we'll call that one good there. Then we're just gonna back this out one, drop the next cam bearing in, retighten, pound that one through. Slide this down in. Oh, I knew that tool was gonna fight me today. <laughs> Uh, 
typically you usually have a rubber band on here like this one we'll show you here in a second like that it's rubber banded so everything stays in place um, this one unfortunately is busted doesn't mean it doesn't work it just makes it a little more difficult um, usually it doesn't fall out when you're moving forward with it it's when you start backing it out through the block that it'll snag or catch or get stuck and uh, fall apart like it just did. So, heard that last one hit the floor. So you should have a rubber band on this, which is to hold all of these together, but I don't. there it's got enough tension to kind of keep it in place but still enough room to slide through the uh, bore so got the bearing resting in there push this guy through slide it on then I'm not going to tighten it all the way yet I'm just going to get it expanded so it's starting to grab the can tight on the cam bearing. Again, make sure you're lining the oil passage up on the cam. Maybe I'll have a better angle over here. I feel like that camera angle I'm giving you makes it look way farther off than it actually is. Um, all right, there's the passage, there's the cam, the slot in the cam. There. Tightened. Slide the cone in. Just like that. Pull. Follow it straight up. It looks way off in the camera, I'm sorry, but that's pretty straight there. I like to hold the uh, hold the rod at the cone so it doesn't walk on you. Almost there. Bigger hammer here would definitely work a little bit better too. But I don't have one here. And you want them to be pretty much flush in the casing. Uh, you can always double check, triple check, flashing that light down the hole. Um, try your best to make sure you get it right on the first time because it's much harder getting these back out. You don't want to sink them too far in and then not have to, uh, have to pop them back out of the motor. Terribly difficult. So here we go, grab the flashlight again and just recheck, 90% certain that's good, but I just want to make sure on my own too. So if we shine the light up here, block it off, we got a nice center hole here in the race, and we're good there. Next one. Too terribly difficult. Again, the right tool makes a huge difference. I've done a lot of 
bearing removal and pulling miscellaneous seals and bearings and stuff without the right tools. This is one of those ones I probably wouldn't even consider if I didn't have access to this one. There's too many variables. And Too many variables, too many things that can go wrong. And I'm already going to be taking a gamble with the uh, quality of lifters and camshafts being made these days. So, the last thing I need to do is try and put in some sketchy cam bearings and I hope that that's going to work too. This one actually tends to face the back of here, so we're right there. Set it up on the floor. Bigger hammer might actually help here. This is probably the second smallest one I have. But it's also the closest one I had today. Just make sure this is staying tight. Check that before I go too far. Centered there. Try and cover this up so you can see the light at the bottom. I don't know if that's going to work for you, but. Definitely centered in the bore on that one. Good on the back one. Pretty much square on the bearing. Exactly what you want. Keep chugging along here. Kind of get it roughly where you need it. Expand your tool to hold the bearing. Oh. <laughs> Leave it to me. Sitting here trying to get this to fit. I'm like, why is that so tight? I didn't pull this back far enough to get it through this. Can. I only have two left, not three. So, bearing in on the tool, roughly lined up. This part doesn't matter yet. I'm just snugging up the tool. Got this lined up. Bearing roughly seated, tighten down. Cone on. Using my ankle to brace the engine stand. Check it again. Perfectly centered in the bore there. It's a good spot to stop. And now we're on to the last one. 
last one will not need a cone um, if you are going to mark any of these up with a sharpie to maintain your location on these this would be the most important one these two passages make sure they're lining up on the block all right i grabbed a sharpie so i can actually mark these like i kept stressing um here's your oil passage so i'm going to put one line right here just so i know where it's at then we got a second oil passage right here all the other cam bearings it's directly in the center or just slightly off center um, but relatively centered in the bore um, this one is the only one that is not like that so always a good idea to mark that if you can and we take our last bearing which i already put on the tool and i have two passages one there on there. I'm going to try my best to center them. Like that. Hold on.